Good afternoon, Good everybody. Afternoon. This is Matt Strain with the National At Home Dad Network. Welcome to our first webinar of 2022. Glad to see everybody's here. Uh, today, we're going to work with uh, Brian Moss. Brian Moss is a personal trainer with a background in boxing. Uh, Brian and I have been working together geez, since shortly before I got married is when I, the first time I started training with Brian. Uh, Brian does a lot of body weight resistance workouts, uh, which are great for those of us that are stay-at-home parents, or really parents of any kind, because it doesn't involve any real equipment. You can do most of it just sitting in a, in a relatively open space. And, uh, you know, these days it's kind of important to get ourselves in shape. Uh, I'm turning 50 next month, and, um... It's not quite as easy to keep up with a uh, four-year-old and eight-year-old as it was back when I was younger and they were younger. Uh, <laughs> seems the older they get, the, the quicker they move. But without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Brian, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about what we can do at home to keep ourselves in shape. Awesome. Thanks, Matt, for having me. Thanks, uh, Stay at Home Dad Network, for having me. Um, uh, like Matt said, my name is Brian Moss, uh, originally from North Carolina, now living uh, in Texas. Um, I'm also a dad. Um, I've got three little ones, uh, three little girls, so I'm a girl dad. Um, uh, I've got an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, uh, and a four-year-old. Um, so I, I can definitely relate to, you know, just one being a parent, but also like how do we um how do we stay in shape as 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 parents as dads we've got a lot of um a lot of things to juggle um with uh you know it could be could be work it could be personal life keeping the keeping the house in order whatever um our tasks we have adult adulting um that we have to do and then we also have to um separate that for separate into how do we uh, basically make time for ourselves with with all the other stuff that we have going on um, so that was that was kind of uh, why I, and I've been a I've been a trainer for uh, I got to do some math here 2022 <laughs> uh, 2008 I think is when you know when I started um, and obviously like you know when you come in as a as a um, young trainer, your your perspective is a little different. But as I kept training, um, uh, I, I kept running into uh, parents, um, dads, moms too, though. But but I found like that it, you know that it, it's a struggle to 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 juggle um, parenting with you know what you have going on at home. So. Um, and that kind of sparked the reason, like, why I wanted to do, like, uh, virtual training and provide some kind of, you know, services for um, people that you may not be able to to really get, leave the house um, and work out um, because you have the added, like, travel time, right? Um, and you have child care that you've got to throw in there um, versus if you can, you know, uh, carve out 30 minutes, sometimes 20 minutes into your workout, um, and not have to go travel. Do it right from your living room or your. I'm in my like my spare bedroom here. Uh, this is generally where I do like my virtual workouts, or that actually Matt is a part of. Um, and you can um, you can get a, a really good uh, workout just from um, using gravity. Um, but yeah, so I, I think uh, one uh, when, when you're looking at like getting in shape, staying in shape, um, whether, whether no matter what your goals are, I think one thing that you have to do is you've got to um, kind of set that set the time aside. That's the first thing that goes into um, uh, getting in shape is you got to organize your time a little bit, um, and once you kind of do that and for my clients I always recommend the best tool that you have is probably not being used is right here on your phone 
Google Calendar, right? So take your take your Google Calendar and literally, you know, mark out a 30 minute block and you don't have to start with, um, a lot of times you'll see like these squat challenges, push up challenges where you do 10 one day and then 11 the next day, 12 the next, whatever. So though, I mean, do those work? They can, um, but it doesn't always have to be like push ups or squats. Like um, you can literally, especially if you're just starting, like stretch, work on your flexibility. And these are things that, um, you know, your your body needs that for recovery anyway. And as we get older, I don't know about you guys. I'm, I mean, I'm 35, but after years of, of <laughs> uh, sports, athletics, my body is, is screaming at me. So I have to, especially when it's cold and stuff outside, it takes me a little bit to get warmed up. And so I wake up daily and I have like three or four stretches that I do um every day like so um but that's a good way to to actually get started on a workout routine is to start with the flexibility so even if you spend 10 minutes a day stretching then um then that's that's going to give you a leg up and you're you're really you're trying to build up the habits right you're trying to build up the habits so you can do that two three times a week to start and then add in like you know some push-ups or or uh squats or um or any other of the the normal um exercises that you would that you would add in so yeah organizing that time super important um flex flexibility working on your flexibility your stretching all those things are going to help uh, with your recovery and not uh like physically tax you because you still got other stuff that you more than likely other stuff you've got to get done <laughs> during the day. Um, you may have, uh, we're, we all know about the, uh, the good old honeydew list. Um, so <laughs> that is, continues so to grow. And they exist for everybody, whether, whether right. you're a full-time stay-at-home parent, whether you're working from home or, you know, whether you're co-parenting, whatever the issue is, we, we all have a lot on our plate. Now, when you talked about like, you know, carving out that little 30 minute period. To start right. out, what do you recommend? Like maybe two, three times a week? I would always say if, if you're starting off, now if you're if you're just gonna start off with the stretching, you can, um, that actually is a recovery process. So you could literally, you could do that um, three, you know, I mean, you could do that every day, but um, if if you're just starting off, I would suggest three times a week if you're, you know, and that's to build the habit because now you're doing more um, the three times, especially if you can do it during the week. You're you're doing more days of work than you're potentially not doing something. Um, if you're if you want to start off and say, hey, you know what? I hear you, Brian, but I actually um, like I, I want I actually want to go ahead and start with some strength training. Then with that, I would say start off two days a week and then add, and then also do your stretches and recovery on another two days a week. So now you're you're trying to build up like your frequency. All right. Mm -hmm. So build up build up the frequency of of movement. Um, and then you can build up the duration. So you may want to do longer workouts or more intense workouts. So that's when we say, okay, we've been doing these these two days or three days of flexibility, let's add in a, or replace a, one of those flexibility days with like strength day. So, yeah. Now, uh, when, we talk, when we talk about doing workout, just using gravity and body weight and that type of thing, yeah. um, these are the kind of exercises that if the kids are in the room and they want to join in, it's not going to do any harm to the kids. Absolutely. That's a great point. And I'm um, glad you brought us to that. So that's, I mean, that's one thing um, that I that I love about, you know, body weight training or calisthenics training. Um, my kid, like if I'm working out here and they they know that he's, if daddy's working, don't, you know, they're not supposed to come in this room. But, you know, as dads, we know they're not always going to listen. And sometimes they just want to, you know, they want to be a fly on the wall and see what daddy does. And that's, that's cool. But Sometimes they want to jump in and if we're doing something and if they can be quiet and behave themselves, then, 
yes, do what daddy's doing. I'm doing some down dogs, like, you know, and, or I am stretching my quads or whatever. They're, they are completely fine. They're not going to injure themselves and it's going to, it's good for them, you know, you know, physical activity, physical exercise is great for them. And it's great to um, kind of instill those values of, hey, you take care of your body. Like we teach them, you know, that they need to wash every day, or at least hopefully we can get them to take a bath every other day, at least. <laughs> um, you know, those, you know, we did, they, we teach them the hygiene, but we, you know, as part of our job as, as parents is we want to give them all the tools for uh, success and to be healthy overall, um, you know, as they're young. If we teach them now, then it becomes habit a lot earlier. And um, even if they don't, they don't grasp onto it right away, like we've at least introduced them to that. And they've seen, hey, oh, dad, like dad works out once or twice a week. Like this is, this is the baseline for, um, you know, for where we start. So, but yeah, that's a, that's a great point. I actually love, um, I love it when they, you know, it may not be while I'm working, but randomly if they want to, you know, sometimes it's a like, dad, look at my muscles and we go and, you know, in the living room and work out there real quick workout um they also uh i like i like encouraging them to work out with me or um for me to work out with them because like i said it just reinstills those those values um it makes it fun um you know i, I don't know if you guys but I, I used to love like doing like rides on my dad as like as a kid, you know, riding riding his back while he's doing push ups. So I do that with them. They love it. It's exciting for everybody. Um, so yeah, man, that's yeah, cool. doing the body weight stuff is something they, they can definitely jump in and uh you know, you can kind of knock out two birds with one stone with that. So Well, I, I know that um when I was growing up, I remember P E being like a daily class. You know, like you went to school yeah. and you had P E. Like it was just yep. one of your classes and my daughter is now in second grade and, and mm -hmm. I was really shocked. I mean, they do PE these days, like once a week. Yeah. You know, um, if that, and I know that there's a lot of schools that, you know, due to budget constraints or whatever else, they've kind of done away with it. And I mean, right. I get it. I know that school is there for the academics aspect of it, but I, I want, like you said, I want to make sure that my kids grow up active and healthy. Uh, because and, and again, the key is the healthiness. You know, it's not about it's not about being super thin or being in you know whatever shape. It's about them being healthy and active. Absolutely, I, I agree with that one hundred percent. And I honestly, you know, as as a trainer, all you know, a lot of people's requests when they seek me out for for training is, hey, I want to lose this or I want to look like this but i always try to just reiterate the the point of we want for first we want to be healthy we want to feel good and we want to uh and feel good could mean a, a bunch of different things right it could be um i didn't get winded going up two flights of stairs or they able to carry all the groceries in <laughs> you know do the do the one trip with the groceries without feeling like I'm gonna hurt myself or. Um, <laughs> well, come on, man, or, we're dads. If you make more than, if you make more than one trip in with grocery bags, you failed yeah, somewhere. Exactly. You gotta you gotta, all in one trip. <laughs> exactly, so we gotta, we gotta be able to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I just try to, I try to reiterate like, you know, that, that this is, it's more than just um, like the aesthetics, right? And, and at our age, like, you know, does everybody want a, you know, uh, a, a beach body? Um, I, I'd say that's a 80%, 90% people, yes, I want to, to look a certain way. But I try to just hammer home the, the point of we, we want to feel good, move good, good, well. good. Like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we want to move we want to move efficiently without pain basically 
and yeah. and we want to we want to keep up with with our kids you know so um you know not only you know so so we take that um ideology and we we basically we just mirror that with the kids and say hey like this isn't necessarily about you looking a certain way but um this actually taking care of your physical health will allow you to have better mental health and have better uh it'll make everything in your in your life a little bit better a little bit smoother you know so oh yeah and i can definitely vouch for the mental health aspect um you know i'm today is my second day out of isolation um after finally getting caught by the rona um and it, it was really hard, like being locked in a room for five days and not being able to like get up and move around or, you know, go to the gym or go out for a run or a bike ride or, you know, um, really anything. Now, now earlier you had mentioned that there was about four stretches that you do every day. Yep. What are those four stretches, man? All right, cool. I mean, so can, I would say if you're willing to show us, that'd be yeah, great. I'll show you. I'll show you because you know. But I, so, the, so the four stretches are easy too, but this is what we got. So we just have this one here. Now a lot of a lot of people, me include me especially, I'll say lower back, man. I don't know what it is when we get older, but that lower back is just like not really wanting to uh, to cooperate sometimes. So this one, this is the first one I do. So it's just a, a cat pose here where we basically just arch our back as much as we can, going way up, and then you just do the opposite, all right? So you just here and then here, all right? And you just gotta go back and forth between these two. This actually, um, this actually stretches the thoracic spine, all right? But in doing that, it, it releases the lower back because what happens is a lot of times when we have tightness up here, in the upper back, this area becomes less mobile, which makes the lower back have to become more mobile, all right? Um, and the lower back is not supposed to do a lot of mobility. It's supposed to hold everything together, all right? Um, but when it starts moving around, guess what? Now those, those discs in the spine start moving around, and that's when we start having the, like the lower back pain, all right? And sciatica, all these different things because we've had too much mobility in the in the lower back. All right, so that's that's one. Um, two is this one, and this one's really simple. But this one stretches your your quads and your lower back. But you're just here. You're gonna lay flat on your back. You're gonna rotate your knees over. So you bring that knee in and then rotate. All right. Uh, this one is like I said, it's lower back. And honestly, every time I do this, I get a little um, my back will crack. So it's almost like a little quick um, chiropractic adjustment there <laughs> with that one. All right. Um, this one here. This one is another. This is um, getting the spine and the back in general, threading the needle. So we right. come you need to, Can you back up a little bit? Because we can't see. There you yeah, go. See, okay. So you got yeah. just out of frame. Thanks. Right. right here is good. Yep. All right, cool. So here we're on all fours again. We're gonna reach through here, and then we reach straight up for the ceiling. All right. So in here, and then straight up. All right. And then the, the uh, number four. This one I always always get this one. This one is probably my favorite. Um, you're gonna kind of sit here with your one ninety degrees um, in the in the legs here. All right, and you're going to lean over the knee, all right? We're stretching those, those glutes in the lower back here again, and you're going to rotate the hips and then go this way, all right? So just, and you just kind of go back and forth. I like to hold, um, when I'm working really on mobility, I'm going to hold three to five seconds on each one. If I'm kind of, it's like if I'm done with the workout, I'm at the end of it, or if I'm just doing recovery that day, then I'll you want to hold for about 20 seconds on those. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, those that's the, that's my four go-to. 
Yeah, most of those are relatively simple. Um, you know, you could probably knock those out during a commercial break. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yep. well, nobody has commercials anymore. We stream everything. So that's you're right. You might, have, you, might have, you might have to pause it to knock those out. <laughs> or you, or you put it on when you're, uh, you know, watching one of those shows that you've seen a thousand times, and you just have it on for background noise. You know. <laughs> oh. Or, or, or God's forbid, when the kids are watching one that you're just trying not to have your hair use into your brain again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, can we please be done with Paw Patrol one day, please? Yeah. <laughs> Outlook doubtful, Matt. <laughs> yeah, well, my, my youngest is about to turn five, so I keep thinking maybe he'll outgrow it. Maybe. Only, yeah. only time will tell. We'll see. <laughs> it, it is a dream. Now, when we talk about, you know, the fitness aspect of things, um, one of the things that always comes in, and it's always been one of the hardest parts for me more than anybody else, is straight up nutrition. Um, okay. as, as parents, um, I, I can't tell you how many times I, I've look down at that plate and been like, oh, we can't let that extra nugget and a half go to waste. I guess I'll just eat those or finish that mac and food. cheese. Finish that mac and cheese or whatever else. But nutrition is always a hard part for a lot of parent for a lot of parents. Um honestly, I love food. I mean you know that. I was a chef before I was ever a dad. Yeah. And, um, you know, to me, a good one, too, I might add, we'll, we'll throw that in there. <laughs> you know, um, to me, being able to eat tasty food is really important. Um, is that something that, you, you know, you work with people on as far as the nutrition aspect of things and, you know, getting yes. away from the, the, the fast food world and more into like whole foods and real foods? Yeah, absolutely, man. So, um, so that's, that's a, that, that is a tough one. I think, um, uh, you know, a lot of people, um, so I've, I've found two kind of two different, uh, I don't know what categories, I guess. So you got, you got people that, um, that, that do, know, that do know how to eat healthy, right? and don't for whatever reason. And then you have people that don't know, don't have as much nutritional knowledge um, in order to like make those, make the good decisions. About 90% probably of the people that do know what to eat, uh, but for for one reason or the other, they, they choose to do otherwise. Um, normally what I what I do for them is I'll just have them track their foods. And I know that becomes a lot more tedious <laughs> work and that's like another task. But if your if your goal is um and I wasn't gonna say to lose weight, but even for people that want to gain weight, like if that if your goal is is to change your body composition, then I would highly recommend start tracking your foods. And you can do that. There's I mean a bunch of different apps. I personally, with my clients, we use uh, My Fitness Pal. Um, but that's, I mean, you enter enter your foods, the portion size, and basically it's going to track it for you. It'll, it'll give you a breakdown of your your macros, which is your your protein, your carbs, and your fat, um, and and your alcohol if you've had any alcohol to drink. Um, and most of the time just tracking the foods is going to hold people accountable and so when they go back and review it after a week they look and say man there i had how many calories just from soft drinks or just from coffee or but so you find a lot of um little opportunities to to eat better or to cut out stuff that you know you were kind of kind of mindlessly eating or that you just have out of habit you know um for for the people that are in the other box um obviously that's a lot more like in depth but um you know most of my most of my people are one on one so I can spend time you know basically giving them the nutritional knowledge to help them make better decisions you know 
And then I still have them track so that they can see, okay, this is what we changed. And th these are, this is why we eat this, is why we eat that. Um, but given that, giving the, um, uh, I found that the more, for both groups, I found that the more that I educate um, my clients on, on different, you know, the health properties of different foods and stuff like that, then generally you make better decisions on, on stuff. And then um, as far as, um, I mean, I'm kind of, I don't think anybody dislikes uh, super tasty food. <laughs> uh, so uh, I completely get that. Um, but I think like, you know, if you're, if your ultimate goal is to lose weight, then you, there's always going to be something that you have to sacrifice, right, in order to get to a goal. Um, but that's also why I try to reiterate the, the fact that, um, hey, you can work out and not have losing weight as your goal, <laughs> you know. So, you know, it can be, hey, I just want to, like, I just want to have better conditioning, you know. I want to... If I'm taking my kids to the park and there's, you know, there's no other kids at the park and they need somebody to be, be it and playing tag, like I want to, I want to be able to be it. And then, you know, um, so though, you know, really, I, I try to go really in depth with the, the, what are your goals and the why behind it, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be um, one, one thing or one goal that everybody has. Like, uh, try to make it like, you know, personal. So. And one of the more important things that that came up in my life, and again, you know, when I was working as a chef, I mean, I ate terribly. I mean, you know, I worked in French restaurants, you know, so everything was a pound of butter here and, you know, some heavy cream there. Yeah. Um, but one of the one of the, the hardest one of the big things that made a difference for me was realizing that eating healthy wasn't, didn't mean that every meal had to be a boneless, skinless chicken breast and steam veggies. Right. right. You know, I mean, you can still have steak and pork chops and the rest of it. You know, you just got to do a smaller, you know, you don't need that 18 ounce porterhouse. Right. As your steak for the night, you know, go with a smaller steak and enjoy it. Right. You know, yeah. a few more veggies on the plate. Exactly. For portion size, the, anytime I'm trying to, I'm, I'm attempting to help somebody change their diet or nutrition, whatever you want to call it. Um, the, the first step is we want to fo focus on portion size, but also focus on, not necessarily focus on taking away, but adding in more nutrient dense food. So, we talk nutrient density, we're talking, we're talking about veggies, essentially, is what we're talking about, vegetables. So those are going to have your, your high vitamins and minerals and the stuff that actually makes your body function properly. That's, that's most of the time, that's where you're going to get is going to be your veggies, your um, seeds, also very high nutrition, and then, and like your protein. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, generally that's where I try to get people to to add more of the good stuff. And the thing is, once you add more of the good stuff, sometimes some of the bad stuff you're if you are actually getting the good stuff in, you don't have room to to even house the bad, the bad stuff. You know, um, if you're focusing on getting your water and getting in your your good nutrient dense food. So yeah, and 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 water is a huge one. Yeah. Um, it, it, in general, uh, yeah, I was a child who grew up in the 70s and 80s. Um, water was something that you bathed in or you cooked pasta in. You know, like you know, we had we had an entire shelf in the pantry that was nothing but two liters of soda. Soda, yeah, yeah. You know, and I mean that was that was all we drank. I mean, you talked about um, lo logging your food. Um, when I was in culinary school back in like the Stone Age, in the early <laughs> 2000s. Um, we took a nutrition class, and one of the things that they had us do was log all of our food for a week. Yeah. Or no, it was three days. And um, I remember sitting down with the nutritionist who was looking at our stuff, and his statement was, everything that you eat is completely out of whack. The only thing balancing it is the amount of carbs that you get from drinking Mountain Dew all day. 
Otherwise, you're pretty much living on protein and fat. Eat a veggie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just one. Try it. Try it. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, it did make a difference. Now, you know, I, I know that you and I work out about, you know, twice a week. Uh, you do, you, you offer an every other uh, Saturday as well. But the, these yeah. days with the kids, Saturdays are tough to pull. Um, you know, now that I've got one in second grade, uh, there's a lot of birthday parties lately. All oh, man. Birthday parties to Tell go me to. about it. Tell me. <laughs> I'm at one every weekend. I feel like if I got a weekend off from birthday parties, like, I count that as That's good. always a yeah. win. Yeah, that's always the win. But then I'm I'm probably like behind on something else. So I don't know. <laughs> Definitely. But one of the things that I wanted to see if we could do because we're right at about the thirty minute mark and, and okay. we're trying to cut these a little bit shorter than we have in the past because we're finding yeah. that you know doing an hour is a bit of a commitment for a lot of parents. Yeah. Um, maybe in this last like ten or fifteen minutes, could you take a little bit of time and show everybody just some really simple like exercises that anybody can do um, to start off and maybe a couple of ways where they could increase the difficulty of those if those are too easy for them? Okay, yeah, sure, sure, Great. sure, sure. All right, so um, I, I'm gonna use this chair. This okay. Is, the chair is actually <laughs> one of my, chair or a bench, one of my favorite uh, tools to use, and I'm gonna uh, drop this uh, laptop down so we have a little better angle. Let me see. Oh, there we go. Okay, so got our chair here, and um, one of the one of the best exercises you can do is a squat. All right, so when we're um, squatting, um, a lot of times. Uh, I find that people are either you're not going down low enough or we're doing something weird with our knees. A lot of people complain about knee pain when they're doing squats. So um, the best way to, to really kind of fix that is to squat to an actual chair, all right? So what you want to do, you don't want your feet right up on the chair. You want to walk out about uh, four to five inches, I guess. And then when you actually are doing the squat, um, you have to you have to sit back, all right? And that's gonna keep you from going straight down, keeps your heels down so that we are transferring the energy through the muscles and not through your joints like we want to, all right? So um, when you're doing that squat, all right, you actually wanna be, it's almost like you're reaching for the chair with your butt and then back up, all right? Now, one simple way to, um, I guess we'll go, uh, yeah, one simple way to, to advance this is um, to do a pulse, all right? So when we come down, all right, so now our starting point is the chair. So instead of going all the way up, you kind of stay down. I call it the work zone, all right? So you stay down in the work zone, all right? Um, and that's going to really burn up those quads and make those those glutes work uh, really hard, all right? If mm -hmm. you are um, even more advanced, then I like, to, I like to do a lot of single leg stuff. So we're super advanced, right, or even like intermediate, then you can go with the single leg version, all right? So same thing, doing on one leg, you've essentially doubled your weight. And we still haven't picked up any actual like dumbbells or anything. All right. So that's um that's number one. So that's one. And when in like, doubt, if you lack a dumbbell, pick up a kid. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um number two, um, uh, we're just gonna go with some uh some push-ups, man. So there are an unlimited amount of ways to do a push-up. And actually, let's let's keep going with our chair. Um, our chair uh, as our our tool here, uh, but when you're doing push-ups, uh, keep in mind push-ups are um, obviously working your chest, working the shoulders, but we're working the core too. All right, so anytime you're gonna do push-ups, you want to make sure your body is in a straight line. So 
shoulder, ears to hip, knee, ankle should all be in a straight line. You don't want to do this, all right, because now you're missing out on some of the benefits of the exercise, all right? So from here, you're just going to come down. You want to try to touch your chest, and then you're going to come back up, all right? If you can't go all the way down, fine. What you can do, you can, you can either go halfway or however far you can go, or find a little bit higher surface, all right? And that's going to, um, that'll make it a little bit easier. If you want to make this one harder, but also use more core, all right? If we're here, we're keeping those abs and core tight. We're going to come down. When we come up, we'll bring the knee in, bring the knee in, all right? And then you do another push. So now we're making the core work a little bit harder when we bring those knees in. I like to um, treat these almost like little little crunches um, because I found a lot of people, I know I don't, I don't like to do a lot of crunches. So I try to get the core and engage the core anytime we're, um, anytime where it's applicable, right? Um, dips, all right, so another one for the upper body, all right, using the chair, all right? If we, um, so the dips is gonna work your triceps, all right? You get a little bit of shoulders, um, but yeah, easy, simple, not easy exercise. You just wanna go straight down and then back up, all right? Keep your butt close to the bench, come all the way up, squeeze those triceps. Um, a lot of, um, like when, when you're working out, um, and this is universal for if you're using weights or just using body weight. You want to make that mind-body connection, um, and you're you're actually going to get better results. You'll get stronger that way. Um, is to really think about okay, what muscles are actually being used here, and really try to focus on on basically on making those body parts burn. All right. If you want to make this one this exercise a little bit harder, you just need to walk the feet out, and we're still the concept. And the movement, the mechanics are exactly the same. All right. So go down, back of the arm is about, is going to be parallel with the floor, and then straight back up. All right. Um, so that's three. One more, I guess, a little freebie is, and I don't have one in here, but um, jumping rope. So 10 minutes of jump rope is equivalent to running one mile. All right. So for anybody that trying to make the best um, uh, or trying to optimize their time. Um, and you're like, hey, like, I, I know I need to do some kind of cardio, um, but I don't, like, I can't leave the house, can't go for a run, it's too cold, or the kids are here, or if you're like me, you just don't like running, <laughs> then you can break out that, you can break out the jump rope, all right? And then if you don't have a jump rope, you can do the little air rope, all right? So you literally set a timer. Uh, one tool I would definitely recommend that everybody gets is an interval timer, um, which you can just download like from the Play Store or I forget what uh, Apple has is there. I guess the Apple yeah, Store. Apple yeah. Store. I'm <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, get it. It's, you know, it's free on there, interval timer. Set, set the timer for 40, anywhere from 40 seconds to a minute for the work and anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds for the rest set it for four rounds or five rounds and you can like i said even if you don't have the rope keep moving you know just you got your little imaginary rope we're jumping you can jump high both legs you can play around with it do one foot um and honestly if you're doing like the air rope then that that kind of takes away the the problem of, you know, having to be coordinated. Uh, <laughs> I was say tripping over the rope. <laughs> you're still able to get a good a good workout without, um, you know, without the like the coordination. Obviously, I would recommend doing the coordination, but you know, because that's something you you want to work on too. But um, use use what you got sometimes. So yeah, well, that's really appreciated. Um, now, now, um, yeah, I'll give you the shameless plug moment here. Um, I know okay. I work out with Brian on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. Uh, we do everything via Zoom. 
Um, and it's it's a really relatively like intense but efficient workout. I mean, we start um, now. I'm over on the East Coast, and we start at about 8 a.m. on the East Coast. And, uh, you know, we have a hard stop at 845 because, you know, I got to get, you know, some of us got to get kids to school or the rest of it. Yep. And, um, you know, it's a it's a great workout. Um, you know, I, you get a good sweat on. I'm generally winded by the end of it. But um, you do a really, really good job of like working with people of differing levels. Um, for instance, I know that the other guy that's been that's been in the morning workouts with me the longest, um, he's a bit more advanced than I am. You know, and, and he you know, he does he does things that are a little bit more on the difficulty side than I do, but at the same time we're able to work out together. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's it's a great time. Good man. I um I, I kind of that's one thing that I I kind of pride myself on is being able to um is being able to make those adjustments really quick on the fly. So I always I have a workout planned every you know every week and it's you know um, we don't necessarily change every little part of the workout every workout but generally they're not exactly the same um, but. Even if, even if, you know, if let's say Matt can do uh, a level, a level three, say, he's, I mean, I'm, this is arbitrary, but yeah. level three exercise and another guy can do level six. Well, uh, based on me, like actually watching what you guys are doing and, and being able to give you feedback, I can say, well, you know, on this next exercise, Matt, why don't you try it, you know, try this one with both both knees down instead of doing it from the feet or why don't we try doing it at this pace so um very little small subtle changes can completely change the exercise um and you know uh, i've been doing that in person it's a little different online and virtual but um i think the most i've had in like a virtual class is like five or six and was still able to you know make those adjustments pretty mm -hmm. good pretty on the fly so yeah yeah no it's 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 a really enjoyable time now if somebody is interested in in, in looking out or joining our group on tuesdays and thursdays or doing some one-on-one -on -one stuff with you what's the easiest way to get in contact with you um so um you can reach out to i, I have a business page on facebook so you can go uh, to at boxing fit boss <laughs> on facebook that's also the website so www.boxingfitboss um or you can you can send me a personal message brian moss brian with an i and it's boxingfitboss.com right yep i say i wanted to make sure to put that out there in the comments so that everybody can Ooh. see it and, um, you know, again, I, I want to thank you for your time, Brian. Um, I, I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning now, now that uh, I'm COVID free and can bring Yeah, man. Hey, we're happy to have you back. Good stuff. All right. Well, on behalf of the National at Home Dad Network, I want to thank you and everyone who joined us. Um, I do want to point out that uh, we have a couple more webinars coming up. Um, in February, we're going to have David Stanley who is gonna come on and talk about one of the topics that always comes up with stay-at-home dads, which is, you know, hey, does anybody have a side gig that you do in your spare time to help make a little extra money? Well, David actually reads books um, for audiobooks. And it's something that's relatively, you know, low maintenance. I mean, we all have computers with microphones and the rest of it these days. and. He's going to go over how he got started in that business and what you might need to do to do some of that. And then in March, we're going to bring on the Gamer Dad, and we're going to be talking about gaming with your kids and, and prove that video games are not the devil and they're not terrible and that you can actually have some great family moments while never losing to your children in Mario Kart. <laughs> because, you know, some things have to remain sacrosanct. You can't let them win. <laughs> 
but we do want to thank everybody for coming um please feel free to check out the national at home dad uh network's web page it is at athomedad.org uh there you'll find links to past webinars you'll find information about becoming a member of the network our upcoming convention in october which is going to be in phoenix arizona um as well as uh our podcast that we do uh weekly so please keep an eye on everything and check everything out and have a great time and we'll get to you guys with information on our february webinar as soon as possible